Mr. Speaker, months after Canadian citizens were taken hostage by the communist regime in China, we learned that the Liberals fought hard to keep a close relationship with China. In fact, the Deputy Prime Minister fought for Canada to train China's military on Canadian soil against the direct advice of the Chief of Defence Staff. With our citizens in jail, our exports banned, and with China committing human rights abuses around the world, why did the Deputy Prime Minister push hard to partner with them? Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, today marks two years since Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor were arbitrarily detained in China. These years have been stolen from Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spavor from their families and loved ones. I know that all Canadians admire the integrity and strength of character these two men have shown, and I would also like to pay tribute to their families. The release of these two brave Canadians is an absolute priority for our government. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I agree with the Deputy Prime Minister. All Canadians are worried about the, fa the fate of Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spavor. Those two years were stolen. So my question for the Deputy Prime Minister, while they were stealing the lives of our citizens, why was she trying to push the Canadian Armed Forces to train the Chinese military on our soil when they're abusing our citizens, our rights, international law, why was this government trying to partner with them? Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I have long personal experience reporting on authoritarian communist regimes, and I am very aware of the threats they pose. When it comes to China, Canada is appalled by the treatment of the Uyghurs. We stand with the people of Hong Kong, especially the Canadian citizens there, and the release of Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig is an absolute priority for our government. Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, the Minister's actions never match those fine words. That's the problem with this government. The Liberals ignored security and scientific experts on the can sino vaccine deal. They ignore our allies on Huawei. And now we, we learn they were ignoring the Chief of Defence Staff when it came to military exercises with China. Defense officials clearly said there was risks of knowledge transfer by working with China. Why does the Deputy Prime Minister think that she knows better than the military about how to maintain our military secrets? Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to talk a little bit about CanSino and vaccines because that's where the Leader of the Opposition began his questions. And let me just say, I understand why the Leader of, of the Official Opposition is worked up about vaccines. And that's because he and his party spent weeks trying to scare Canadians into believing we were at the back of the line. Instead, Canada has the most robust vaccine portfolio in the world. Vaccines arrive next week, and the Pfizer vaccine has been approved. Uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. As the Canadian forces and our allies were warning about the protection of military secrets, documents reveal that this government were more worried about upsetting the communist regime in Beijing. Every time we ask about China, they say that national security is a priority, or as the Deputy Prime Minister just demonstrated, they do not answer the question. So my question is simple, Mr. Speaker. Why did her department try to overrule the Canadian Armed Forces and force them to train the Chinese military on Canadian soil while our citizens were being in prison? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, let me be very clear about our government's priority since the moment that Michael Spavor and Michael Kovrig were detained. Our clear priority then and now is to secure the release of these two brave Canadians. We stand with them, we stand with their families, and we are going to continue working doggedly until we secure their release. The opposition. Mr. Speaker, today, 
is the second anniversary of the jailing of the two Michaels. This morning we learned that the Deputy Prime Minister put pressure on the Canadian Army to participate in joint exercises with the Chinese Army. It's incredible, Mr. Speaker. The Liberal government has to take this situation seriously and stand up against the Chinese regime. The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister, Mr. Speaker, our government and I personally, we are taking all authoritarian communist regimes threat seriously. When it comes to China, our clear priority is that we need to stress today on this sad anniversary is that the two Michaels, Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, are two brave Canadians. I commend the efforts of their family, and I'd like to point out today that Canada is working for them, and we will keep doing so. Monsieur le Président. Mr. Speaker, we learned that two departments were at odds over the terms of engagement between the Canadian Army and the People's Liberation Army with no apparent direction from the Prime Minister. This is a stunning lack of leadership. Government departments working in opposite directions. Canada's diplomats and military working at cross purposes. When will this government develop a clear policy on China? The Honourable Minister of Global Affairs. Mr. Speaker, today is a sad day. It's been two years since Michael Kovrig and Michael Spoward were imprisoned in China. Two years were stolen from them, their families and their loved ones. Mr. Speaker, I know that on, here on this side of the House, and I hope on all sides of the House, and even all Canadians, Mr. Speaker, are speaking with a single voice in calling for their immediate release. We will fight with them every step of the way. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, that answer demonstrates why this government's policy on China is such a complete mess. Yes. The Prime Minister took one position on Meng Wanzhou, Ambassador McCallum another. The government was going to make a decision on Huawei before the last election, then they weren't. The government was going to come forward with a new framework on China, then they weren't. Instead, we got an evolving and shifting policy, the opposite of a framework. Enough is enough. When will this government start defending Canadian interests and Canadian values, work with our allies, and come forward with a clear, coherent policy on China? Mr. Speaker, I'm afraid today is not a day for politics, Mr. Speaker. Today is a sober day that marks two years of the arbitrary detention of Michael Kovrig and Michael Spiver. Mr. Speaker, two years that have been stolen from these fine gentlemen, two years that have been stolen from their families and their loved ones. Mr. Speaker, I know that on this side of the House, and I know that my colleagues on the other side, and indeed all Canadians want to speak with one voice today to ask for the immediate release of Michael Covering and Sparver. Mr. Speaker, we will fight with them at every step of the way. The Honourable Member for Selkirk, Interlake, Eastman. It would be great, Mr. Speaker, if the Minister would actually answer the question. Yesterday, top secret government documents revealed that this Liberal government was irate when our Chief of Defence Staff stopped Communist Chinese troops from receiving winter warfare training on Canadian soil with our soldiers. Even after acknowledging there were national security concerns raised by our Five Eye partners, the Liberal government said there is still a desire to maintain an ongoing relationship with China. Why is the Prime Minister bowing to the Chinese Communist regime and turning his back on our closest allies? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Mr. Speaker, our government will always stand up for Canadians at home and abroad, and this includes our relationship with China. And let me be very clear, we do not train with the Chinese military. But I understand, understand the, the member's concern, Mr. Speaker, because it was a previous government that actually signed a cooperation plan initiative in 2013 under Rob Nicholson when he was the Minister of National Defence, and that member was a parliamentary secretary of defence at that time. Thank you. 
The Honourable Member for Selkirk, Interlake, Eastman. Mr. Speaker, uh, the Defence Minister knows full well that the Chinese government back then to the Chinese government today is completely different. And Canadians are shocked and outraged by the Prime Minister cozying up to the regime in Beijing. That's his own, uh, that even the Defence Minister accurately, accurately described as being engaged in hostage diplomacy. We already know the Prime Minister naively admires the communist dictatorship and now wants to train Chinese troops at Garrison Petawawa so they can learn tactics that are Five I allies warned would cause a dangerous transfer of military knowledge. It is sickening that the Prime Minister has complete disregard for our armed forces, our national security, and our democratic way of life. The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, and this is because of the agreement that they had signed, this is one of the reasons why we actually changed uh, our approach because of the concerns that the member outlined, uh, Mr. Speaker, because we will always stand up uh, for our Canadian to, to Canadians who are arbitrarily uh, detained. This is one of the reasons why we actually stopped our training uh, with the Chinese, uh, Mr. Speaker, and this is exactly what we're doing. And I would ask the, the member right now to stop turning this into a political issue because that's exactly the steps that we have taken. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.